You are now listening to Carly's Couch. I'm Carly. And I'm Lex. In this podcast, we discuss a wide array of topics about life and how to live your best life. Whatever that looks like for you. (laughs) Hope y'all enjoy. In this episode of Carly's Couch, we talk about busyness and productivity and how constant busyness often leads to stress without real progress. So how can we reduce that stress and create more meaningful results? Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this because I feel like this is something that affects everybody and we all can kind of fall into the busy trap. Yeah, especially nowadays because there's so much hustle culture and, you know, everybody wants to show off how much they're doing all the time. And in the meantime, it seems sometimes like it's the quiet folks who are actually making big moves and getting things done. And so it's important to make sure you have like a understanding of what's really pushing you forward because busyness, like we just said in the intro, really does stress you out. If you're just doing a bunch of stuff, right? Without um, a real intention and focus. So this should be a good episode for all of you who also maybe feel stressed, you know, through your work week or, or getting things done. Um, but first, Carly, lead us in with the question of the week. Okay, so this week's question from the couch. What was your best purchase this year so far under a hundred dollars? Hmm. So somebody said a resistance band kit, forty dollars on Amazon. I bet that was Eddie. Was it? Yeah, that was. That yeah. was. He was telling me about that the other day. Yo, resistance bands are amazing. Um, and the 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 older we get, um, people are realizing more important uh mobility is and how you need that needs to be a thing. And so resistance bands are great for working out, stretching, mobility, all those. So you can find cheaper ones on there too. But it sounds like he got a big like a big daddy kit, like a nice one. Yeah, I've gotten a few before, but it's boring and I, I just never do that. So the kudos to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody it's like said, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was going to say, it's like either you can take care of stuff now or you can deal with it later. And that mobility is one of those things if you're not really taking care of it or stretching. So. Okay. <laughs> so somebody else said a Sonic ice maker. And I'm, am I guessing that's from like the restaurant Sonic? Um, yeah, they have a specific kind of ice. It's like soft and they come in like little kind of like pellet type things. Um, but the person said they got it from Amazon, like as a gift. Somebody brought it for their birthday and it's been like their favorite thing all year. Yeah, that's not cool. So they didn't purchase um, it. Yeah, but I guess somebody bought it for him and it was a hundred dollars. Um, sure. someone said a milk so Amazon been popping on this list. Somebody said a milk frother, um, which I also love mine. So that's right, a look, great purchase. And um East Asian kids to work on this list. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Amazon. <laughs> Come some <samida>, because they go to work. <laughs> Poor things. Jeez, capitalism is crazy. Um, Milk Father is a, a game changer, though. I ain't gonna hold you. I, I don't even like mm-hmm. my coffee without making it with my own thing. You were Somebody, the first person I knew who had one, so. Yeah, definitely. Like, it makes a big difference. What's up with this next one? Jump um, someone, so first of all, when I ask questions, people saying gifts or links, like I got so many Amazon links, I'm like, guys, I can't click on this from this yeah, thing. Yeah. It becomes a whole thing to try to then find it, but a lot of Amazon links, but at the top of the one that this person sent me, it's like a jumpsuit, like a athletic type of cute jumpsuit, but they're like, they're a new mom. And they said it's very sexy, very flattering and like very comfy. Um, and so that was like been their favorite thing. Probably real cheap too. Cause I got some stuff mm-hmm. up there on vacation and it's just like, you know, you're about to wear that one time. Um, and that's that. Somebody else said a coloring book and markers, pencil and crayons. That's cool. Yep, someone said Air Jordan too. And I'm like, okay, cool. And a hundred, I'd like to see those. See which ones you got. They got the fake joint. They got the joint with Shaq. Look. Like- <laughs> <laughs> they got the yeah, send, uh, send the pics. The pics right. mm-hmm. And then let them know what your boy said. Man, the last one. I'm not a big fan of capitalism, but I have to use it because of assimilation. So I'd have to say knowledge from my elders. Those cost a blessing of tobacco, <laughs> old ways. And I'm not laughing at him. I just think this is so like interesting. But what I guess a blessing of tobacco is is um, a phrase. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's and cool. like, yeah, like you bring that, and then that's what you have the conversation around, and it's a whole thing. So shout out to Ethan, man. He gonna be on here soon. But um, thank y'all for answering this question and sending me so many links that I couldn't click on. I appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, that's but- on Facebook, huh? <laughs> Huh? That's because you when you ask on Facebook. 
Um, no, people are sending. So if I was on Facebook, I could actually click on the links, but because it's in a question box on Instagram, I can't click on those. That? I can't. Yeah, they were sending the Amazon links in there, and I couldn't. No, everybody just writes in there for me. I know I never got like a link or nothing random. That I got ten links. Yeah, I got All ten, right. and I was it's like, "Well, I'm just gonna put one on here." The one that had a description, and that's the one I went with. So. That's for me. That's real. Well, thank y'all for y'all answers. Those are good answers, though. In general, I'm not mad at this list at all. Do you have a favorite purchase this year under 100? Mine would have been what we had already talked about, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but I would say my supplement because it costs 72 or $76 with tax. Um, Look, inflation might have went up because I looked that hole up afterwards. It was 120 But I get it for, through my, um, oh. my nutrition store, mm. and it's, 50 some, it's $56 plus, uh, you know, whatever shipping. Um, I just bought one for Damo the other day for his birthday because we were talking about we have our smoothie chat. So, um, And then I don't know how long one of them lasts, but I'm on my second one probably since the summer. So maybe like a month and a half, five weeks, six weeks maybe. That's so. pretty good though, especially with all the benefits. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's worth it. What about you? Um, mm, I should know the answer to this because it was my question. Um, I'll say, I'll say, okay, so it's, we just had this heat wave. I bought um car seat covers because my car, it'd be so damn hot. I burned my leg getting in my car. So one of my favorite best purchases this year was a little car seat cover. Um, so I didn't burn my legs on my back getting into my car. Even What's with my little baked potato joint over it, mm -hmm. um, my car would still be so hot that, and I don't even have leather like that. I just have the little cloth, but that shit was still so hot. Oh. So those have been great. What was your question? Oh, I was asking what's the material, but if because you already have cloth seats. Yeah, it's um, it's like a waffle something that absorbs heat and cold, so it, it doesn't do either. So, so that in a steering wheel cover. When you go mm -hmm. in the car. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, I don't take it off. I can just sit on it. It just like, um, it hooks around it. Mm. Yeah, but it's cute. They, they look like little flowers on the, um, on the bottom part. They're real cute, but not hot. And so very practical. And I, something I'm like, every time I get in my car, I'm like, I need to buy that. Finally bought mm -hmm. it. Great. Good. Just in time. All, All right. right. Thank y'all for answering the question. And now let's get to talking about busyness. So Carly, what what is busyness? Busyness is whenever you feel like you're like going like doing a bunch of stuff. But I feel like it's kind of like when you're spinning your wheels. Like you're doing a bunch of things, but like it's not really moving you forward to your part. Like it's um, a feeling of constant activity, but not a lot of progress necessarily to show for all the things that you're doing. Is that an official definition or, or what you're saying about it? And I just ask that because I would feel like technically busyness is just being busy, which is having a lot to do. Um, you know, cause you can be, and, and if you disagree, let me know, but I feel that you can, you know, be like, Hey, I have a lot of things to do today. I'm busy. And that's very valid. Um, but I do for sure understand that for the purposes of like our convo, what we're talking about, I think I definitely understand. And most people understand what we're saying when it's like, you just got a lot to do, but in your mind, it's almost like you're making it more important than it has to be. Like, you don't have to really be doing all of that. You're just needing to do mm -hmm. that. Um, But I'm curious if like, if that's part of the real definition. The technical definition um, says the state or condition of having a great deal to do the quality of being full of activity, being excessively detailed or there. Oh, that's different. But so full of activity and having a great deal to do. So very basically just always having a bunch of stuff to do. Yeah. Or the so having, state of. having a lot to do. And, and so, yeah, so I will say off top that also like, that doesn't mean you should, you know, that is necessarily wrong or bad when you have a lot to do. And like I said, like, if you feel like you find yourself kind of always like, oh, I'm busy or busy, 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 busy. And like, that's like a, you know, a badge of honor and, or you are stressed out and everything from it. Then I think it is time to assess what does busyness really mean to you and for you in your life? And like, is it really busy or is it like unnecessary busyness? Mm -hmm. And I think I thought about this episode because I, I had talked to like a few different people and I'm like, how y'all doing today? You know, good, just busy. Everybody just busy, just busy. And that's like, okay, cool. Yes. There is a plethora of things always to do. I think it's what you said. It's like wearing it like a badge of honor, like almost like it feels good and like 
like worthy in this in this hustle culture? Yeah, it's just like another um, kind of go to response, like saying you're fine. Um, and I've in I don't know how long it's been, maybe within the past years, have started trying to catch, you know, always saying like, oh, I'm busy and just try to think of something, you know, just even a little more descriptive or, or a little bit more specific when actually saying how I am, because also that's not how you are. And maybe there's also something to that too. If somebody says, how are you? And you're like busy, it's like, okay, that's what you're doing, but mm -hmm. how are you? And so it's almost maybe feels like if somebody's always saying like, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Maybe that is a person and I'm all off the cuff and just coming up with stuff. But maybe that does mean, as I'm busy getting a phone call, maybe that does mean that you are kind of identifying with the busyness by always kind of responding, I'm, I am busy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's when it becomes an issue is like when you're identifying with it or like feeling like if I'm not busy, like you're not doing anything, like people who always have to like busy bodies, like always doing things all the time. And the big issue with it is like, it's, it's cool to be busy, life happens, but it's that it can lead to burnout and it can lead to overwhelm and it can lead to you not doing things well because you're so busy and spread so thin. Like that's the issue. Yeah. And the fact that, so like you said, if the term busy means you're, you're always doing stuff or you're, you know, doing this and this and this and this and this then of course you're going to be burnt out because our bodies need rest. Your brain needs time to relax. Your eyes, my eyes are so itchy right now. Y'all probably can, I was like, I wish I had some eye drops. You can't really tell on this, but they're like so red. Um, and so it's just like, you. it only degrades the quality of what you're doing anyway, um, which is what I noticed a long time ago in general, right? So that's why I'm very pro, um, okay, like I don't have to do this. I don't have to. And like the have to is was, it right because sure maybe I need and this is a real example right now like sure I have an agenda and stuff I need to fix up do some things before meeting tomorrow do I have to do that right now I'd be like eh not really because also if I'm at a point where I like I really need to rest I really need to chill it's like you know I'm really good now and just listening to myself and be like I'll look at that tomorrow because tomorrow I'm gonna do it in 10 minutes 15 minutes and or even if it takes a while it'll still be like better quality or whatever mm -hmm. um, and then of course in general like I think one of the real um, actual solutions for this is to really be able to tell what's the most important stuff. And if you were doing that, you know, earlier or spreading that out better, then you wouldn't always be doing so much busy stuff to where, oh, the thing you actually needed to do is like lost in the busyness. And, you know, now you're always rushing for something. So all that to say, like, I think you can feel, and even though we were describing it, how how stressful it is to consider yourself and to always just be busy and just all these lists, all this multitasking, all this organizing. Um, sometimes you you need to just slow down a little bit. Yeah, because you're not bringing your best self to anything whenever you are like running around. And then I, fi I find myself like very, like I'm more anxious when I'm like doing too much and not knowing what's important and like especially my first few years of entrepreneurship um and even recently like being over committed and not knowing what's moving me forward like led me in this place where I did feel like I was kind of spinning my wheels and when I was researching okay well what's the difference like if you find yourself like you know being busy um like how do we get more productive and in my research I found this quote that I really liked um and it's by William James and um, the author said it was written like a century ago. So Mans was writing with a calligraphy pen, like dip, like a quill and ink back in the day. And he said, um, in the context of being busy, like he said, he noticed that his countrymen have absurd feelings of hurry and always having no time in that breathlessness and tension, that anxiety of feature and solicitude for results, the lack of inner harmony and ease, in short, by which with us, the work is so apt to be accompanied. And so it's like, he noticed that all these people around him are like scurrying to and fro and all anxious and all feeling like they're not getting enough done. And always like this lack of inner harmony and ease, like life doesn't have to be as hard. And so I, it just kind of made me think about like how in society, like if you're busy, people are like, oh, good for you. She's out there. She's busy. She's doing stuff. But it's like, is it really being productive? And am I okay when I'm always out here, like putting 150% effort forward and all these things that might not matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that quote because the the way he wrote it is it sounds like how it feels, and um, it it yeah that feels like how it is when you just don't have um, anything but stress and just busy, busy, busy moving around. Um, would you say though that 
Would you disagree that there are times when one needs to be busy? Oh, no. I think that there are seasons in life when things go crazy. For example, like um, small businesses around the holidays, like you are probably much more apt to be more busy. If there's launches you have for clients, you're probably going to be more busy. Like when, um, like with the launch of baby EMs or different things you have going on with your clients, like you're, there are times when you're going to be busy. I think when it becomes an issue is whenever you're not prioritizing the most important things and you're being busy just to be busy or to do something. I wonder if, I guess I could say it probably is, but I wonder if it is a a feeling or maybe more so a state of being that you can, I don't want to say addicted to, because it might not be like you're trying to keep it, but like that you get so accustomed to. Um, because I think about it, for example, like, yes, sometimes I am just straight up busy, like, because again, I love to chill. So in the days where I really am, like, you know, on a day like today, I, you know, since I'm on my 10th. 11th hour right now of like it was actually work 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 that whole time and then you podcast for a couple hours right and it's like oh I'm actually busy and I recognize though like in our day-to-day like I'm not trying to do that but what I would notice is that yes sometimes when and especially when people come over to my house or um you know maybe it's a time where you're chilling but you like just keep moving around like you start doing stuff and excuse me like that's where it's like okay why do you feel like you need to be doing something um and it's almost like it becomes like an ingrained thing that um I I need to be moving I need to be doing something instead of just letting yourself chill like I really have to tell myself like let's just sit down like chill it's okay yeah, I, I think it is. I think it's a learned behavior. I think it's something that's socialized, like we're socialized around hustle culture and always be looking like you're doing things. I think that people equate very heavily a lot of times what they're doing with their personal worth. And so that becomes a different thing. And then on the like physical thing, I think that we get addicted to um, a certain level. Well, it also becomes a certain level of dysregulation in our nervous system that we become mm-hmm. accustomed to. And so whenever we are relaxed and chill and in our parasympathetic nervous system, our body's like, wait, 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 but but, but normally we're doing things. And so it kind of like makes you anxious, like even when you're at home, like just shuffling around with stuff. And so I think it's, it's an amalgam of all of those things. So then is it possible to get things done, have a lot to do, get through your list? and do that without all the anxiety and the stress and the heaviness in a different way I think so I haven't nailed it perfectly so I don't have like a perfect formula but um I do have times and days where I am very busy and I knock it out of the park and I feel really good about it and I would say for me some of those things that make it different are like one if I'm very well taken care of myself like I'm well slept I'm well fed I have been exercising and doing all my other stuff I'm a more full person and able to accomplish these things whenever I'm focused you mentioned like putting our most um important tasks first and just making sure that those things get done like when Mm -hmm. when those two things are in order like I feel like it's a lot easier for me to move forward in a less anxious less like uh, way Yeah. yeah so I would agree with exactly those things because there have been periods very recently for me. And of course, again, I would attribute this to gut health and just like very much more mental clarity where I recognize, and I was talking to somebody about this today. It's like for a while there, I kind of recognized that there was no time period between thinking about like what I need to do and getting it done. And all of a sudden it's like, everything would be done by like 1 PM, 2 PM. Mm. And like, oh, and like there are days where it's like, oh, I podcasted, I did four meetings. I wrote uh, six documents. I read my book. I made lunch. I watched a movie. I hung out with my friends, came over. You ran. And I was like, (laughs) how did, how did all this stuff even get done in the day? And it didn't feel stressful, but I think because of, um, planning appropriately slash what you said, like taking care of yourself, if you're in a better space to move through those things, plus, um, actually not avoiding the important things because, we're talking about busyness like that's when it's like all right you start your day out and you're looking at emails and it's like you can spend two hours just trying to clean out your inbox before you do the thing that's the important thing you need to do and so um a lot of times it's really about how you prioritize I believe and how you how you attack things um that makes it feel like oh I actually got more done because I got important things done 
every single time. I'm going to shout out Coach Ash. Um, Coach Ashley, she was on a podcast during the pandemic, so a while ago, but Ashley Hill, if y'all want to look her up, she's awesome, Coach Ash. And um, we had a little system because I was telling her, I'm not feeling like I'm getting the things I need to done. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And she was like, all right, I want you to text me at the top of every week. Text me your five most important tasks. Bless you. I don't know if you sneeze. Um, and <laughs> I, because and, I was telling her, my bad. And I was telling I was telling her like, oh, I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. She's like, see, those aren't your important tasks. Those are things you do every day. You get those done. We don't need those. What are the things that will actually move you forward and spend 80% of like, spend more of your time on those and then everything else falls in line. And that really helps me like actually refocus my schedule. And then you and I talked about like making sure that you plan out your next day, like tomorrow, tonight. So I know what I'm working on. When I wake up, I'm not wasting a lot of time like, what am I going to do today? Hmm, let me wash my dishes. Let me find out. Yeah, that makes a big difference. When you when you start the day already organized, then you, then it's like you have no excuse for not just starting that first thing on the list. Um, and so, again, that's part of like proper planning, I guess I would say. Um, but then it's like when you go ahead and also attack those most important or bigger or harder things, it also... Um, Hmm. It's also like it sets you up for everything else is like mad easier, right? Like it's almost yes. like if you, attack, if you attack the thing and just get it done, then you, maybe it's a mental thing too. Cause it's like, okay, I got that done. Like, and now it's like, boom, 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 whatever. And you get the other stuff done more quickly too. It's really like a mind over matter thing because it feels like that doesn't make sense. And yet um, it's one of those things where if you can try to force yourself or, and get into that practice, then um, your day really does feel a little bit better. It does. And like I said, I think it's easy to get busy and like feel addicted to being busy and thinking that. But if you notice that you are, you are busy all the time and you're not getting the things you want to done or the quality work that you want done, some things to think about is like, Busyness is typically come, stems from like doing things just to do things. So a lot of the times, like I said, people find value in actually just doing a thing. And it's like not having good time management. You're over committing to things. You're saying yes whenever you should be saying no. You're trying to avoid idleness. You're not having good boundaries when people ask you like to help them with the project, even not even just like coming out to a party or doing other things, but it's like helping other people before you make sure you get your stuff done too. Um, and so those are all signs that signs that you are more busy than actual productive. Yeah. Like when you're looking at it, like you don't really have a strategic focus. You're doing a bunch of stuff, but it's kind of like a hamster on a wheel because you're not really intentional about how you're spending your time and energy. And you know why? Like, I feel like at the core of all of that is because when you're being busy is being reactive because yeah. you're typically like in all of those kind of examples, you're reacting to idleness, you're reacting to you know, oh, this just pinged in. Let me look at this. And with productivity, it's more proactive. So like, let's say if you started your day, and you already had your list ready, you've already been proactive. Um, and so when you're reactive, reactive literally means like you are reacting to your environment. So you're not the one in control. You're not even determining what you're doing because let me check my email. And now oh, I have to respond to this. I have to answer this. I have to do this. I have to you know, respond and do blah, 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 as opposed to let me get up and do X, Y, Z. And so you're already giving control away from your day. So I think that's really like the biggest, like core difference. Productivity is proactive. And so I think that a person could look at anything they're doing and be like, did I react to this? Because even with business walking around the house, you walk, you're walking to go get some water and then you see, oh, the sink's full of dishes. I got to like, that's reactive. So um, you can use that to ask yourself a question. Yeah. And see like, eh, if it's reactive. That means I might not have to do it right now, unless, because things do happen, like, um, like it just happened the other day, it's like, there was a mistake on social media, and it's like, oh, we got to uh, fix that up real quick, right? You got to react to real fires, and most of the things aren't real fires. Yeah, that's that cool story about Napoleon, who never answered letters, um, like, people mm. send him letters, two weeks, he's like, because if it's still an issue, then it's an mm. emergency, we can handle it, if it's not, then it was never an emergency in the first place, yeah, and that's, that's cool, like, like people's lack of planning is not like a, an emergency in my book. And I think a lot of times that's like kind of how things get pushed up is other people have like chicken little, like the sky is falling, but your sky might not be falling and you don't have to necessarily try to solve other people's problems. Yeah. And I think it's gotten easier over time to 
look at my task and things that I do in that way where it, that's where I'm like, okay, do I have to do this right now? And eh, not really, I'm going to bed. Um, or even like, I'm just not going to do this. I'm going to read or do something else because it just, I still have the choice. And so I always feel that's when, that's when I feel happy because I'm empowered and I'm making choices on what I want to do. Um, and it's like, oh, I feel successful right now because I, I can choose what I want to do. I don't have to be reactive and be busy and on this, this wheel. So really like productivity is the opposite of all the things you said, as far as it's more purposeful, more intentional. Um, it's, it's more meaningful goals, um, not reactive and it's more quality. And so of course, with all of those qualities, it's going to feel more sustainable um, and lead to a greater satisfaction. So you'll feel better and you're not feeling as stressed, even though it may seem like, you know, attacking the harder things or more intentional or bigger things, um, you know, may be tough. It actually is is less stressful than thinking about a hundred things that you got to react to. Because also part of being reactive is about considering how other people are, think about what you're doing. Like, Oh, I got to respond mm. to this person. You know what I mean? Like, it's still like, it's not even about you as much. Um, and you're not putting you first in being reactive all the time. Um, so that's a big part of just feeling, I think, more empowered when it, when it comes to being busy. So when, so to your point earlier, when you were like, you know, and people are always like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Well, I, I, you kind of hear like, all right, like, you, you know, like you don't, you're not in charge of your day. You don't, you're not empowered. Like, it kind mm. of, like, like it's actually not dope. It's not really a badge of honor for real, for real. Um, and maybe that's something that we can start to do is like change that, um, like change that. What's that word? That's just, it's not a stigma. Um, change, change that like mindset to where it's like, people are like, oh, they're so busy. And it's like, okay, but are you productive? And I wonder how mm. people respond to that. That's a good one. And I love it. It's like taking charge of your day, owning your time. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it always feels so much better because then you know you you did all the things you set out to do for yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like you putting it as reactive versus proactive is so powerful and kind of helps me think about like, oh, um, so then my next question to you is, so if someone, let's say, listening to this and they think, damn, that is me. I am more reactive. Um, I already mentioned like planning your day the day before, making sure you're taking care of yourself. What are some other tips or thoughts that you've done or things that have impacted your life to help you know, like what, what, what actually moves you forward? Like what are some, some ways you can differentiate between tasks or things that are going on in your life? Um, I would re recommend to people if they don't or have it, um, some things like cutting all the notifications off your phone. I don't have any notifications. And I still check my phone all day, but it's still different because I'm checking when I want to. I would say things like not even having email on your phone. Um, and like, unless you're a doctor or the beeper, you know what I mean? Like you actually, a lot of the things, like consider how different and how recent it is that people have so much access to us. Um, I feel bad when I have to text somebody on my team, like, hey, but you know, it, I'll do it because I'm like, oh, I didn't see you say on another slide. I got to text you and I don't want to do that. And it's like, Actually, you know, somebody the other day got upset with me because I didn't answer a text about, and it was some bullshit, but it, asking me to change a password on on somebody else's Instagram thing. Like, it was a lot that was like, no, and it was nighttime, and I just didn't respond. Then they go hit me with, like, the tap back and question mark, and I was like, I'm really not responding now. Yeah. And so it's like, you, why, why are we so pressed to like get so much response on stuff and like, you know, stuff don't even be important. So I will say that's one of the things you can do to just get stuff from in front of you. Outside of that, it's like, take an actual break, literally take two days where you don't check your email at all. Like I guarantee you, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't take a real week ever until 2020 when I went to Denver that week. And oh. I was like, oh, that was easy. Like everything was fine. And sometimes you don't know everything's fine until you actually just stop doing stuff. Um, and then the other thing outside of that, I would say is to just plan better for like this and this and this and this and this have to be done. This is delegated. And if you don't have people to delegate to, that's fine. But like, this has to be done. And this is all that has to be done. And I guarantee you everything else will be fine. So it really is kind of like being a little more hard ass and like owning your time and you have to do it to recognize that it actually wasn't that deep 
You have to. I think that's so important. Um, I'm going to make a little infographic because I think these are all great for this week. Um, so I heard discipline. So saying no, making sure you're setting your clear priorities um, and over. Look, avoid I, don't over even, I don't even not see stuff and look at stuff to, to not have to say no. Like <laughs> levels to this. <laughs> Is um, I, I have read receipts for a reason, and people be like, "Ugh, read receipts." I'm like, "Well, for me, the read receipt means like you see it says delivered because I just haven't even seen this yet, so that's okay." Mm -hmm. like, I feel like it's different if it's like I read it and didn't say nothing, but like I didn't see this yet, so like you got to move on. And like when I see it, cool, I'll, I'll either say something, I have to mark it unread to come back to it, and I'll let you know like oh, I'll come back. But like, yes, yeah, levels. I'm not you're not even gonna get the no because I'm I'm not looking at that. That's not important right now. And that is that that is helpful. And I'm glad I'm glad you have those boundaries. Um, I have, I have friends who don't oh, answer. Yeah. Like my homegirl, <laughs> uh, actually, Kiara, she's on the podcast. She has a flip phone for her work. She don't have mm -hmm. email. I don't have none of that. She does not. She turns her whole off at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm not calling y'all. Y'all know what's up. Like we can talk about this tomorrow. Um, I think the only other thing I would add to that, because do all of those things, um, is simplifying your schedule making sure it's not crazy, making sure you have time to do those things that bring you joy, that take care of you. Uh huh. And, and to scheduling, I would also say, I think probably some of the most busy people in the way we're talking about probably don't have a schedule. And by that, I even mean like, I'm going to do my di the dishes at this time. I, you know, I work at this time. I'll do, you know, this at this time, like have blocks of time. So, so that you know when you're going to do stuff, because like, Otherwise, you'll be all over the place and scattered. That That's when it gets weird. Yeah, and I like the time blocking, like, set for working on, like, a process of thing or working towards a thing, not necessarily results-based, because sometimes that can be disheartening. So it's like, I'm going to do biz dev from 9 to 10 a.m. I'm going to do this from this time to this time. I'm going to work on this client, um, making sure you're doing that. And then whenever you have your whole schedule, you can really evaluate it and look at, is this necessary or is this busy stuff? Like, am I just trying to fill time? I think one of the biggest questions, too, is if you are so busy, I'm doing air quotes if you're listening, if you are so busy, like, why are you over committing? I think that those, that's a good conversation to have for yourself. Like, do you want to feel and, more valued? And so that's why you're over committing and doing this. And if you're super busy and over committing, that probably means you're not accomplishing what you wish you were accomplishing with all that busyness. Because the only reason I'm over committing is because I still need to make more money or like do more of this or get more of that. Mm -hmm. so like, hmm, how could I actually make the tasks I'm doing cover those things instead of like overdoing it and now everything's watered down? Man, going back to our homeboy with the uh, ink and quill pen from the very beginning, William James, this is the second part of his quote. It is your relaxed and easy worker who is in no hurry and quite thoughtless most of the while of consequences. Who you're, who is your efficient worker? Yeah. And so thinking about that lightness, whenever you are taking care of yourself, whenever you do know what's most important, you're able to bring your full self. You feel good in spaces. You bring your best self. You have better ideas. You're not feeling rushed. And so really yeah. try, try looking at your schedule this week and maybe cutting things that aren't important. Try saying no. Look, start by making the schedule because that's the problem is there's nothing to cut because you ain't make the schedule. That's fair. So you okay, that's fair. So make make your make your list of like the top things that you need to do in the week. And then every night, like say what you're going to get done the next day. And then, the, you know, like the stuff like emails, for example, right? We're talking about, you know, don't check them, blah, blah, blah. But like, yes, of course, I know you probably have to check your email and do your work first or focus on your biz dev or your a task you already know you have to do try to just do that first and then you have your time where you look at email that's very I'm, I'm never mad at somebody who don't respond to no email immediately and so i'm always kind of blown when people are like well you didn't respond like my nigga you sent that two hours ago <laughs> like get out of here like get out of my inbox and so please i check my email at 12 and then because here's the thing you and you notice it all the time with email with social once you check it you're in you're staying there you're in there like you can't yep. not keep coming back to it. And so it's like, what if you didn't check your email till 12? And then at least it's like you had some time. And now, you know, from there, you're probably going to go in and out of it. But like, that's what we mean by like making set times to do things that are about other people. Because now that's not reactive. Because oh, I'm proactive. I check my mail at 12. And if you don't respond to me by four, I'm going to holler at you at 12 tomorrow. And here's the thing. People are so scared of like, oh, I don't want to get fired. I don't want people to blah, blah, blah. 
Like, no, people just learn that they need to get stuff to you by a certain time and they learn they need to eat earlier. Um, And when you set those boundaries that you were talking about earlier, then guess what? People abide by them. But if you don't set them, they don't abide by them. You teach people. They learn and they get in line. And it's the same thing with them respecting people's boundaries. Um, And I love making sure you're doing all your things and really taking care of yourself. Because then I feel like when you don't, there's a lot of resentment and other things that just pop up. And so you just come from such a better place. So Mm -hmm. this week, make sure that you first set a schedule and then go through it and see what you can cut, see what you can add, see how you can focus on what's important. But remember that being busy is not a badge of honor. Like it's okay to take time. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to take sabbaticals, vacations, and really figure out what's important to you so that you can focus on what really moves you forward. Yes. And please let us know what ends up working for you as you shift from busyness to productivity. Um, And if you have any additional tips, we'd love to hear that on carlyscouch.com under the post, on our social, um, anywhere you see Carly's Couch, and then we can have this discussion, but don't expect a quick response. Not for me. (laughs) Not for me either. Look, I be trying. I be replying, but it be late, but I be replying. That's (laughs) for me. Um, (laughs) So um, have a great productive, and not so busy week and we will see you next time bye y'all